Hello? Hello? Good evening. George. Hi, George. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Anthony. How about you? This is actually Fitzgerald. <laughs> I'm sorry? I'm Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald? Yeah, you said Anthony. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. I don't know why it's small. I'm almost to a spot where we can have. Uh... All right. We have about four minutes. I'm going to be getting a couple of things uh, put on the screen, and then I'm going to open up the line for those individuals who will be calling in. Give me a second. I'm about to uh, park here shortly. Okay. I, uh, I was hoping to make it where I was going to make it, but we're only going to spend 40 minutes, uh, so it shouldn't take us too long. The last time you hit, I hope you still work on it. <clears throat> Okay, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and open up the audio room. Here we go. Let's get started here for a second. Yes. Miss Williams sent me um, receive correspondence. Here we go. Good evening. Okay, let's see here. I think this ought to be a match here. Sideways. Two, two, three, seven, eight, six, and here we go. It's outside of your plan and will incur a one cent per minute charge if you continue. You can hang up now to avoid the charge. A beep indicates when there is insufficient balance, and you can add to your balance by dialing 611 from your phone, online at myt-mobile.com, or visiting a retail store. Welcome, and thank you for choosing FreeConferenceCall.com. You are helping people around the world communicate for free. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Here is talking about a charge. Phone number you have dialed is incorrect. 
if you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait and please enter your PIN followed by the pound or hash. If you do not know your PIN, please enter pound or hash. <laughs> Not a charge yet. Mm -hmm. What did they say? Right. Yeah. 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 No, good it's good on me. Okay. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we're going to get started in this meeting uh, immediately. I'm going to set up a share screen here for everyone. Give me one second here. I was just opening up the line for individuals who wanted to call in. And here we go. Okay. So uh, I want to take a quick second for everyone to have an opportunity to introduce themselves. So if we could go around and um, state everyone who's here, I'll begin. Um, my name is Fitzgerald Graves. I'll be facilitating the training this evening. And um, if everyone's on the line, um, or, or is everyone, if everyone's on the web, then I will leave the line open for the first 10 minutes and then if no one calls in I'll disconnect that line okay who's next Ann Williams thank you Miss Williams Sandra Drew Bernie Walker from Fresno good evening Miss Walker Sandra Drew Say that one more time. Sandra Drew. Good evening, Ms. Drew. Thank you for calling in. Are there any other uh, members on the line? That would like to introduce themselves. If not, we'll go ahead and proceed. First order of business uh, I'd like to address is that um, I want every, I want to thank everybody for calling in, um, and thank you guys for uh, giving us your time. Um, the the goal here is to make sure that we can have a uniform approach when it comes to uh, um, having meetings and um, pushing through various uh, motions, policies, or uh, support letters and things of that nature. Um, one of the things that uh, was it, well, that was brought to my attention by the uh, uh, the president. Um, is that we would need to make sure that we have that a uniform understanding of what's expected of each, each member as, as well as, oh, excuse me. I apologize. Here we go. All right. One second here. Uh, Ms. D uh, who, who, who just came in? Devers. Good evening. Hi. All right, thank you for coming in. Okay, here we go again. All right. So uh, one of the things that the uh, um, presidents and other board members feel that is important for the organization, uh, if, if we understand um, what's expected of us and, and, and clearly um, uh, know what what it, what it requires, and that we take those responsibilities very seriously. And if we can't, then um, it's no you know it's no um, uh, concern if you have to uh, uh, relieve yourself or allow someone else to step forward or ask for assistance. Um, the whole thing is is making sure that we know what we're doing, and when we're operating in spaces that uh, require professionalism, that we show that. So, with that being said, let's move on. Uh, the first things that we want to talk about are responsibilities, liabilities of being a board member. As you know, the bylaws uh, um, has a uh, description of what constitutes um, respectful, reasonable, and professional behavior. And it will be greater detailed in the uh, coming out uh, procedure and guidelines. So what are responsibilities? When you have various positions, and those positions uh, on the board require you to use your vote, require you to read documents, require you to attend meetings, and require you to communicate when you receive any type of correspondence, not only from the president, but other board members, 
so that we can move effectively and accomplish those goals that have been set forth. Um, I want to make sure that anyone that's on the line or on the Zoom, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. Um, I would say raise your hand on the thing, but uh, I'm operating three different uh, 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 devices. So just feel free to call in or to, to, to interrupt. Now, those responsibilities that we're speaking of, um, um, they've been described in various parts of the seizure and guidelines and the bylaws. And if you have questions about what those responsibilities are, feel free to contact uh, the president, secretary, or myself and um, anticipate future, meet, future trainings on the responsibilities uh, that will be put together by our president. Okay. Um, are there any questions about responsibilities or is there any confusion about what those responsibilities are? And if you need greater detail that you can contact one of us offline for the sake of time. Okay. Liabilities. Okay. There are certain legal liabilities that when you operate um, in a board and under 501c3 that legally bind us. When our signatures are put on these documents, when we uh, take votes in those minutes, that's uh, basically like a receipt for what we're doing as a board. So understand how important um, not only your responses are, but your actions in the vote um, and the process of get, getting certain motions passed and certain policies implemented. So the other thing about liabilities is when uh, you operate outside of the guidelines, you put us in or put the, the organization in uh, peril of either suits or being held accountable with fines and even criminal um, prosecution if we're completely outside of Robert's Rule and the Brown Act, which is why this training is very important. And we're gonna, this, I, I, if, you, if I get too detailed, tell me, Mr. Graves or Fitzgerald or, hey buddy, take it easy and I'll listen. Uh, the, the goal here is to make sure that you guys feel comfortable under, getting this information, um, engaging, and then, you know, asking questions to finally, to fine tune and understand the processes. So moving on. Uh, so each liability, each board member, when they take those positions and they accept it, whether you're appointed or elected, uh, you, the, the obligations come with it, the liabilities come with it. So understand you are in a, uh, uh, a very um, interesting position and a very serious one. So um, one of the other topics is talking about, and we will cover this a little bit more, but abstention in the process of voting. Um, we'll get in good detail about uh, um, when, the, when it's considered to be reasonable and acceptable or uh, um, when it can be uh, a detriment and um, um, uh, uh, like, like a pause or a hold. Um, and we'll get in greater detail, okay? Respond in writing regarding the FOA business. What that means is when you receive an email, if you see that email, a simple okay, thank you, yes, no, I vote yes, I vote no, those are the responses that are expected from the board members. Um, it's important that we respond because the 24 hour clock starts ticking once it hits the, once it hits our email bank and um, I, I'm, 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 we were trying to come up with a system to where it could be like urgent or where the header can be very distinct and we know that we need to respond immediately. Um, uh, we're going to further discuss that with the president and secretary and we'll hopefully be able to assist you all with that. Okay, now, uh, a, a clarity on appointed positions versus uh, running for or campaigning or being elected, okay? Um, appointed positions are out of necessity and the power is wielded to the president with the approval of the board. So when the when organization has a loss of members or as a, as a detriment for quorum or, or a negative for quorum, um, it, it is, it, it is uh, reasonable and expectable for the um, leader of the organization to take steps to secure uh, a quality board with the ability to uh, attend and, uh, and create quorum for the purpose of implementing, passing, and agreeing upon set policies, motions, or amendments, or addendums as well. But nonetheless, I, I, uh, we're going to move back. So, when you're when you're appointed, that that is uh, the, get the power given, and for the purpose of the organization. When you're running, um, it requires you to understand what 
what is expected. Uh, the bylaws also will, and, and actually pro procedure protocol for the uh, um, elections committee will give greater detail on the qualifiers as well as what's expected of the members to, to even run for a position. Okay, so if there's other questions about that, we, will, we can get in greater detail, but for the sake of time, I just wanna put that out there. Uh, we did touch on the 24 hour response time. Um, that's the email, as soon as it hits the email bank, uh, we're trying to work out a way to um, put in subject line to urgent. Okay, we'll get that done for you. The importance of minutes and importance of board members uh, correcting themselves or making sure that their uh, verbiage is corrected and reflected correctly. Uh, no, that was a mouthful. <laughs> so the minutes are the receipt. They tell anybody that's reviewing our um, organizational documents what we're doing, the steps we've taken to do it, and they can review that information to tell and determine whether or not we operate it in the standard which is the Brown Act and Roberts Rules Orders, um, or if we operate outside of that, and if there's a different um, format of governing or, or, or meeting operations you wanna take, then you, you guys, we could discuss that as well. But right now we, we're expecting and, and have been operating on the Roberts Rules and Brown Act. So with that, minutes are very important. Knowing um, those individuals who at least initiated the motions are very important. Now, second, seconding um, varies, but for our organization, it's important. Um, also, when we're uh, developing minutes, the importance of, uh, of discussing or, 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 or itemizing fiduciary, I mean, uh, monetary or, or money responsibilities always requires a vote of the board. Um, some things that um, can be decided within the committee uh, that, that requires funding still has to come to the board. Even though the committee has been given power to make decision, when it, when it requires any funding or, or, or it always has to come to the board nonetheless. Um, with that being said, are, those, are there any questions so far about the first uh, six topics we just touched on? Because we're gonna dive into some fun here in a minute. Board meetings made easy. How many of you guys love board meetings? <laughs> I hear all those, ah, oh, yeah, awesome. Well, I love board meetings as well, but I love effective, uh, efficient board meetings. And what that means is when everyone understands and knows the terminology and understands the process and you work in that confidence, we can move quickly. So we're going to test that theory, all right? Welcome to the structured meetings for committee guided organizations and our standard is Robert's Rule of Order and Brown Act or Brown Act. Okay. If anybody needs any uh well, we won't go into history of that. That that's something we can do later. Okay. So one of the topics or uh idea uh, themes that's running uh with our organizations is motions. When to put them, how to put them, you know, uh I mean, uh, um, the verbiage, the, the, the concepts, and making sure that you're uh, considering all the aspects when you're putting it out there and making sure it doesn't conflict with other uh, uh, actions or motions that have, have been already taken. So what we're going to do really quick is go over these points really, really, really fast. Now, in order to uh, bring a motion to the table, first, you must be recognized by the chair. The chair being the president or the designated individual that the president or the designate designatee e that the president appoints either to run that meeting or in or absent. So, and in doing so, you, uh, you, you gain the ear of the, of the assembly and you can move forward in your motion clearly so that it can be heard by the secretary or the recording device clearly. And the reason that is, is because when you make these motions and um, if they are misheard or misinterpreted, they're, they're not the same thing. And when you're voting on it and then someone comes back and say, hey, we're gonna have to bring that back. Um, late, uh, uh, there are various uh, terms that mean bring it back before the board because 
it wasn't the, the terminology was incorrect or um, it wasn't it wasn't what was intended to be voted upon. So in order for the motion to be brought to the table, it must be recognized by the chair. Um, it must be stated clear and precise. Um, I gave an example on the uh, as 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 simple as this. I have moved to sell popsicles in the Singleton store. Right? That's a vague example, right? Well, because like we got to make sure sometimes uh, uh, certain um, items are used in order to maintain the integrity of the the, the concept or the ideal of the the, the park. So you would want to get something that maybe has been around for a number of years that is easy to remake or get redone. So the second motion would be, I moved to sell popcorn sickles, name of the product, in the Singleton store at all events except February for $2 a piece. So that's all the information. That's everything about what you want to do. That way, when people uh, make a decision on that motion, they don't have to come back. Oh, well, we got to vote on a budget. Oh, or, or we got to vote on a price. Oh, well, uh, we need to vote on the date. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, well, that conflicts with this. Once we've taken all those ideas, put them in a very precise uh, uh, statement or format, and then we offer it to the assembly and they hear it, then they can move on it really quickly. Okay? So, um, one second here. Okay, back to share. I apologize. Each time I have to let someone in, I end up losing the screen, but no biggie. We're right back in it. Remember, board meetings are fun. Here we go. Now, are there any questions so far? Seeing none. Um, again, motion stated very clear. Um, Once the motion has been stated clearly, there's, a, of course, required a, uh, a second, right? And in that second, the, the, that offers an opportunity for the people in the assembly to discuss it. So when they're discussing it, there is an opportunity for objection. And then if there's any objections or people feel that the information being um, shared isn't, isn't isn't enough for the vote to go through, then, and only then, they would offer a move to the previous question or say, hey, I'd like to uh, uh, poll the board so that we can know whether or not this is gonna move forward or if there's more information required to uh, change the, the, or move the dial of the, uh, the members participating in the meeting. So it's, 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 it's one of those things where we have to make sure that when you give this information, you give it, so that any uh, arguments or any uh, disagreements or any uh, questions can be asked and it clearly meets what the motion is. So moving right along. Just for, the, just for the general information, the purpose of the motion is to bring uh, specific uh, either issues, ideas, or concerns to the floor, um, to have it voted on so that action can be taken. Um, anything that's just discussed if it's just discussed or someone says, oh, I got a plan or this needs to be done, it, if, it, if it's not done through the process of bringing a motion to the board, it's not done. Okay? It must operate that way so that the chain of command can stay intact and so that there's a, a structure or, or an integrity that keeps us, keep checks and balances and make sure that we have a legitimate organization being ran under, under very clear and transparent um, um, precepts. So once the motion is presented, of course, it requires another member of the board to second it. Uh, providing the second does not mean with you, that you agree with the motion. It simply means that you're given an opportunity to be brought to the floor, for it to be discussed, for it to be uh, challenged, and eventually if not agreed upon for it to be voted upon. If there's not, not a unanimous con, uh, consensus, then of course there must be a vote. Any questions so far? None. So you say, how do I do it, Fitzgerald? How do I make a motion? 
Well, it's very simple, everyone. You would simply state, I move after being recognized by the chair. Or you would say, I would like to make a motion. Some people love the phrase uh, for, to come from the chair after a little bit of discussion about an agenda item or a non-agenda item that was may have been introduced. So the chair would always get, always has the opportunity to say, I would entertain a motion. That signifies or it, 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 it initiates a process saying, oh, the chair is willing to hear it. So the motion can be put in place once that's heard by a member, a voting member or voting board member. So like that voting board member would at that point um, it initiate the motion, stating the motion clearly. Then someone would second it. Of course, addressing the chair. At which point, who's ever re, uh, uh, receiving the motion would at that point say, are there any objections or is there any discussion first? Is there any discussion? And we have the discussion. And if there's any objections, of course, we, we go that route. Now, normally when there's a vote, there's nays, a A's and nays, or yes and no's. They mean similar. One is uh, used more in a legal format or for legal terminology. The other is more for common understanding. They're both good. So don't get caught up in that. Um, once the, once the uh, mo motion either passes, carries, or is adopted, that means at that point, the presiding chair or the de designatee by the president or the board at that time, depending on the circumstance, will at that po point either designate the responsibility to a specific committee or a specific individual or a specific agency, which usually is listed or usually is brought up in the motion and that directive is immediately put into the minutes so that in the future, if there's ever a similar uh, task, responsibility, or obligation brought forth, and we can review the minutes and say, hey, we already did this, and this was the outcome, so we're going to step away from that. Or uh, we, we, we talked to people about doing it, but then this happened, and so we were like, where are the minutes? And the minutes will tell us exactly what the outcome was, and then we can move forward. So, any other any questions pertaining to making motion? Seeing none. One important aspect of the meeting is approval of the minutes. Um, I, I put this in here because I wanted to make sure that everybody understood the importance of minutes. Again, they're the receipt. Without the minutes, it's like you're just hanging out with friends, talking about all the good things that Alan Words could or could not do, and we're just loving each other where we're not doing business. Because no matter what happens on the agenda, if the, if the mi minutes doesn't reflect that action or non-action or tabling or something's being done, we're just hanging out being friends, which I love because you guys are awesome, of course, and what a blessing it is. So the approval of the minutes come of one of two ways. If there's a need for correction or amendment, right? It requires there to be some form of discussion, clarity on the motion. Um, in some cases, it requires a reintroduction depending on the amendment, or it could be just accepted as an amendment. Now, depending on how much it changes, it might just have to be uh, um, restated and a new motion brought forth and the old motion set aside. So, of course, the chair would ask if there are any corrections to the minutes before stating, right? I, she, they move to approve the minutes, which is a less formal way. The more formal way is the receiving of the minute, uh, receiving the approval from an, two board members. First one um, saying that they, I approve of the minutes as they have been presented or reported. And then the second would be, I second that. And then we will move forward, right? So are there any questions on the approval of the minutes or the importance of minutes? We all understand that's our receipt. 
that's what's that that tells what we're doing that tells us what's going on and as far as uh our plans we we we, we need those minutes right and we and also the minutes need to reflect in, in in not in great detail but at least specific detail when it comes to motions specific details when it comes to um the delegation of the responsibilities and specific uh uh uh, uh detail when it comes to who were there, who's there, um, how did they vote, uh, date and time, um, and 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 I believe once once the once we get under different um, operations outside, of, or, I mean the pandemic, um, we'll be required to do the posting in various places and all that. But right now we're covered, and I've already talked to the president about that, so there's no need to go into that. But um, nonetheless. Um, Everyone understands the importance and uh, the approval of the minutes. Awesome. I appreciate that. So what we're going to do now is really quickly do a quick review. Um, I wanted to give this information to everyone really quickly. Um, it, it's important we understand membership rights, right? Um, membership rights, excuse the double S's, <laughs> it basically gives us uh a, when we're in good standing we have uh certain um privileges and then we have certain rights privileges are things that are um are, are are not mandated whereas rights are and these are those rights uh you 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 can participate in nomination for candidates for board members uh you can make motions on the floor now this I apologize. This is for members, uh, board members. Um, you, you you have these as well because you're a member, but you you have the power or, or the privilege to vote. Um, members can make motions from the floor in board meetings. Um, however, uh, they do not have the privilege to vote. Um, they can receive ten percent discount on all merchants sold in the single to store. That's just a plus. That's just a plus. Um, and they can also request quarterly financial reports from Friends of Allensworth uh, and also other uh, organizational documents. And you can refer to the bylaws for further information on about privileges or rights. Okay. Any questions so far? Seeing none. Awesome. You guys are getting this real easy. Oh, man, I knew I was going to be with a standout crowd. So um, I wanted to uh, present to you just really quickly. Uh, it's like a summary. Um, a main motion must be moved, seconded, and stated by the chair before it can be discussed or voted upon. If you want to move or speak to a motion, address the chair. We have already done it. Established that. If you wish to approve the motion as is, vote for it. That's all it takes. If you disapprove the motion, vote against it. If you approve of the idea of the motion, but the language is not clear, amend it or submit a substitute for it. Okay, simple in a nutshell. I know, he's like, you just said that. I know, it's all about review, member, retain. Review, remember, retain. Three R's, triple R's, say it with me. Review, remember, retain. Great work, everybody, here we go. Moving along. Suggestions continue. Now, um, in certain cases, you, you may not understand the motion, right? So what do you want to do? Do you want to stall and hold and say, I don't get it. Um, I'm, I, I, I need a little bit more exp explanation. I need some clear understanding. So ideally, we would try to refer the, if, if it's a motion that impacts a specific committee and that committee probably needs to do some um, um, detailed work before it's brought to the board to be voted, voted upon, we would direct you to that committee to you know, have all your questions answered. However, if it's a new motion being brought to the floor in the, in the midst of the meeting, uh, during uh, discussion or uh, our, our discussion brought it uh, forth and then a motion was determined that to be needed, um, you, you can address the assembly, you can speak to the uh, member who brought the motion, and you can make a plea to the chair. Now, of course, you can um, re request that it be tabled or if it's something you want to get, uh, you agree with and want to move 
quickly you can say I moved to the previous question. Now I moved to the previous question uh, can be um, tricky because you want to make sure that you clearly understand before you use that terminology or th that um, language because essentially what you're doing is calling to vote. And if someone else has more questions that could actually um, ass either assist in the voting yes or assist in the voting no, and they don't have all the information, have all that information, they could make an, an ill and informed, an ill and uninformed decision that could also penalize the organization. So we wanna make sure that we get that information, we're able to understand it clearly, and if not, ask the questions so that anyone else that may have a question regarding the topic can benefit from it and be, be, be as understanding as possible because we're all here to learn and grow. So if you feel that the pending question should be delayed and it's not urgent business, um, again, you can make, lay the, make the motion to lay it to the side or table it or postpone to a later meeting. Now, um, let's see, if you want to, oh, say request a decision, discussion after the motion is second. Okay, that, there we go. Um, like I stated earlier, if you want to uh, if think more on the motion and you, 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 feel, you feel that I, I almost understand it, there, even if it's after a second, you can come to the chair and request that there be discussion. And but then remember, there are three cons and three pros, usually before a vote is taken. So that the topic isn't uh, elaborated on to a point of exhaustion, which I won't do either. So with that, I'm hoping everyone has a clearer understanding. And if you don't, you know, I'm always open to uh, breaking it down and um, trying to find um, a, a common uh, uh, understanding for all members. So let me know. Now, this is the third and final part of that uh, procedure. And it says that uh, if you think further discussion, um, if you think that no, no further discussion is needed or is unnecessary, move to the previous question. We covered that earlier. Um, if you think the assembly members attending the meeting mm -hmm. should give further consideration, then um, you could move for the committee to either, uh, again, postpone it, um, Directed to a community that has a greater insight on the uh, uh, on the topic or issue, and then there's the scary term of being having motion recalled, um, which really isn't a very scary mo a term. It's just and most people when they put their motion and it's been passed, uh, having it recalled, uh, you know, you know, it, it sometimes make them feel like that maybe they didn't do a a a, a, a service to the organization and making sure that that motion was uh, presented in its best format. But we, we can all get better at that and we're all gonna uh, be able to do the best motions ever known man, so, or woman, excuse me. <laughs> and here we go. So the other thing is, is that if, um, if you move to have it uh, uh, reconsidered, um, it, it's just about a discussion between uh, a board and them seeing that the motion was uh, not done in its best way or revisiting with the secretary, the president and two other board members and then having it amended in the record and then would also be receivable as long as it's brought before the board again and then voted upon, voted upon as it is amended. So I believe if there's uh, any other, if there's any other questions about it, um, I, I can offer that in greater detail. So if you think I talk a lot, no, I'm just kidding. If you think that it takes too much time for the speakers and on each topic, so you can also set time limits. Um, those time limits range, usually range from three minutes. It takes about three minutes for most people to uh, communicate either the idea of the topic or uh, their perspective on the situation. And so we wanna make sure we can have everyone's voice heard whenever we're on the board or when we have speakers or public comment, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that we are uh, being responsible with the time that the people are giving us. And um, as that, 
I wanted to also point out that when it comes to dealing with fiduciary or, or, or monetary responsibilities, a vote is required. So when, when in, in those times, when you want a clear understanding of what the money would be spent on, we offer an extension of time and it just has to be agreed upon by the board in general. Um, in some cases, some people will second it and others, the chair just say, uh, let the record reflect. We will be extending the topic uh, discussion time for five minutes or 10 minutes. Okay. So be aware of that. Now, board members, we want to be very um, um, cautious with the motions that we uh, bring from other members. When it, when, okay, so like make sure that if you if you have a member that's saying, hey, I need this motion brought to the board. Um, I, I want, I, 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 this is what needs to happen, so forth and so on, right? Make sure that you spend some time on that motion so that you can present it in its best light so that it's received well and any doubts or questions that a person may, a member may have or a member may have can be clearly explained because that way the people hearing it will either, they, they will hear it clearly and make a very educated decision on the vote or they will not hear it clearly and, and, and make a decision based on emotions or what they think they heard. So make sure we're clear on it. Now, it looks like this is a lot, right? It's not, it's everything that we've already went over. I put this in a little compact so that if any of you would like to just take a snapshot, screenshot, this is what you need to know right here in a small compact. You can highlight certain parts of it, and then um, you can keep it uh, in a paper. You can keep it on your phone, in your screen, uh, in your um, photos, so that if you ever have a question of how to put the motion on the floor, what's required, what, what, what do you do after the motion's been heard, um, how can you navigate the discussion, the objections, and then the vote? right there, all in one little screen, okay? And guess what? We're done, everyone. How about some questions? <laughs> Hello? I'm here, I don't have any. Need to do our Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald. Really, the new board member should have been on um, for this training we have like six additional people and we don't have any of those people on the zoom training for today so <laughs> we'll be in touch well i mean the 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 awesome thing about this it's been recorded so right yes anyone that wants to uh, jump on the line and get some information and you know whatever they need to do, it's right here for them. Um, this, this, these are just tools that we'll be using. And um, I, 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 oh, oh what, one second, what did I do? Here we go. All right. Let's see here. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, my apologies. These are just tools we're using, so that we we can uh, be. Uh, be efficient in our meetings, communicate clear, clearly with one another, and also build our confidence when it comes to operating in those professional environments. So if anyone has any questions and we want to do another Zoom meeting, there will be some other, uh, uh, after we clear with the president and other board members, some other trainings that we're going to offer uh, that will cover in great details like various responsibilities for each positions and you know, kind of what's expected of, of, of all of us when it comes to the organization. So again, I wanna thank you all for tuning in. I hope it was informative. I hope I wasn't too much, too fast. Um, um, I, I'm just excited about this opportunity. I'm hoping that we can all grow from it. So Good. if there are no thank questions, Appreciate thank you all for coming. Great. Thank you no for your question. Support. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Graves. I do have a suggestion. I think that the, the actual FOA um, uh, bylaws might uh, re 
might be suggested to do a meeting on. Okay, so that's some, one of the most important things that a lot of uh, members might uh, misconstrue. So just a suggestion. So are, are you suggesting that we should have a meeting pertaining to the bylaws and reviewing the bylaws? Absolutely, in the okay. same fashion. Okay, so exactly, um, actually, uh, <laughs> President Sasha already has me working on it, so. <laughs> okay, just a suggestion, thank it's you. On it's on the way. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks again, Mr. Gray, we appreciate it. No problem. You guys have a great evening. Thanks for uh, attending our first parliamentary training. And um, I look forward to engaging in others. Great. Be safe. Be sheltered. Goodbye. Bye. 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 That was pretty good. I like that. Not bad at all. Do, 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 do.